Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez at home again. Yeah, we're still on lockdown, social distancing. Yeah, call it whatever you want to call it. We went out to the post office today to drop something in the mailbox and took a drive through the parkway and I saw nothing but people outside walking their dogs, running together in groups of five and six. What are these people thinking? Uh, they're immune. Uh, silly, 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 silly. Stay home. I went to my backyard just now, a little while ago. The reason being, I don't know if you saw this. This is number six. Get the focus just right on that. This is number six, brand spanking new. I just peeled off the plastic off the bottom where the sensors are. Took it out for a flight. In fact, several flights. I used one of my third-party Camelback batteries, the ones with the hump in the back because they have larger cells. So there are three cells, but they're just larger, so they take up more space and they provide more power to the drone so that it can fly longer. The discharge rate is identical. Now, can a $59 drone perform when it used to be a couple hundred dollars back in the day without the controller? With the controller, it was about a $450 dollar item that's including batteries and a couple of other accessories like extra props and all of that but anyway um it took a while but finally the gps did connect this drone may have been sitting in a box forever until finally a buyer bought a lot of them and sold them on ebay again for 60 bucks 59 something free shipping i believe is from new jersey but anyway so i took it out today I went through several takeoffs and landings, calibrations and all of that. So I compiled what would have been about a 15 minute totally boring video into a much shorter one, about five and a half minutes, something like that. And I just want to show you how well this drone performs, even though it is not even close to the stability of a Bebop 2. This is the Bebop 3.0 or 1, like everybody calls it, definitely definitely not an anafi this is a king of paradrones right here and you know this is my favorite go-to bird if i want to shoot some beautiful aerial cinematography or video if you want to call it that i call it cinematography because it is um and photographs as well 21 megapixel raw files not so good with the bebop one absolutely not as good with the bebop two again same kind of camera the anafi is just superior but anyway the bebop series treats you with a stable video that is amazing to watch because you realize that there's no way that this camera should be able to do that because it has no mechanical gimbal it does it all electronically and optically so before i make you fall asleep waiting for the actual video let's go ahead and jump into it i'll come right back afterwards and give me my last two cents, if you will, and wish you happy flying like I always do. All right, let's jump right into the video.
All right, so as you can see, I did edit it. I love the music that I use. I actually used that for a Bebop 2 video that I did featuring my grandson, Nathan, around their house. And we just walked a drone around and uh, enjoyed it. And uh, you saw it in my little backyard. I had to keep, you know, make sure that I don't hit anything. And uh, it performed quite well. It wasn't as stable, like I said, as a Bebop 2 or definitely not on an Afi, where it just stays wherever you let go of the sticks, that's where it stays. Not so with the Bebop one. Um, I did replace the original GPS module with a replacement because it wasn't locking up to GPS, regardless of how long I let it sit out there, just waiting for satellites. So once I installed a replacement, and I, you know, the new one looked perfectly well, but I don't know what was going on. So I replaced it, and within a couple of minutes, it did hook up. And now after that, it just immediately locks onto GPS. Took it up. It kind of drifted around a little bit. I had to control it to make sure that it stayed where I wanted it to stay. And again, that's just part of the, you know, what you have to live with with an older Bebop 1 or 3.0. If you can find the Bebop 2, which I have in the other room, actually, I pointed this way, but yeah. It's next door, um, along with two others, by the way. And this is number six of the Bebop 1 series. So if you can find a Bebop 2, maybe $190 is what you're going to pay. You're going to need a controller. Now, this flight was basically mostly control with the Sky Controller 1, which is that big aerospace-looking thing, okay? And then I switched over to just a simple fly pad. So you go from a controller that sells for about $150 used, actually, um, to something that sells for like 30 bucks, basically new out of the box. And you will see that really there's not much difference. In fact, I actually like it a little bit more. So the way to connect that is to allow the controller to connect to the drone, and then you connect your phone to the controller. It has its own Wi-Fi. So that's it. You just take off from there and you're able to do things that you cannot do really on a fly pad or even a sky controller too. The smaller one that I use for the Bebop too. Anyway, enough of that. If you guys have any questions about any of these drones, just ask below and I'll be glad to answer you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little flight. Again, if you are a raw beginner, I recommend this family of drone. You will spend very little money and their GPS control, they have excellent camera, 1080p video on the Bebop 1 and the Bebop 2 allows you to learn, get that skill set down before you move up to something very expensive and very reliable, I have to admit, as all DJI products are, and that's what usually people then graduate to. All right, so until the next time, happy flying, everybody. Bye-bye.